Last time we were talking about ASRock motherboards, we had Intel Core Ultra 9 285K paired up with their 8, uh, 860 board Lightning Wi-Fi. And today we're going to have, as you can see, a board is missing here. I'm just kidding, this is an ITX board, we're talking about ASRock Phantom Gaming B850i Lightning Wi-Fi. So it's for an SFF build in general, but in this scenario I didn't place it in an SFF build, I just placed it on the benchmark to get the scores, to give you some idea about how it performs. Now I did something a bit different and I didn't go with some sort of a mid-range processor for this type of board because let's be honest, B boards in terms of B850, B860 are mainly designed for mid-tier processors because of the low VRMs and everything that they can do in general. And I did a different thing, of course, I went with the AMD Ryzen 9 9950X3D. Why? Because I wanted to push the limits of this board and to see how will it perform, right? So in those terms, there are loads of benchmarks, of course, as per usual for my motherboard testings and reviews. So we're going to get to that part. But before we go into that part, unfortunately, I don't have a box to show you how it looks in general, because, you know, I always present the box as well. But we're going to go through the motherboard and give you some ideas about what you can expect when we're talking about in general specifications. So... We're having a premium 8-layer PCB, 10 plus 1 plus 1 uh, VRM design with 110 Emperor SPS for V-Core, 2 DIMMs DDR5 dual channel and 2 SATA 3 6 gigabit per second ports. Now we have high density power connector which is 8 pin 12 volts uh, 1. Then we have uh, support for AMD AM5 socket processors, one blazing M.2 socket which is a PCIe Gen 5 times 4. Then we have a PCIe Gen 5 times 16 slot uh, with ST technology and reinforced uh, steel slot. A premium audio, we're talking about Realtek ALC 1220 uh, 7.1 channel HD audio codec, individual PCB layers for RL uh, audio channels and Nahimic audio. Talking about uh, cooling connectivity, we have the regular pump co PWM connection and additional uh, two PWM uh, CPU fan headers. It supports uh, Intel XMP and AMD Expo and DDR5 can go up to 8200 uh, MHz uh, clock speed. Unfortunately, as, as per usual and as you know, for AMD you don't get a uh, possibility to get performance boost out of a uh, higher frequency memory modules. We have aluminum heatsink of course on the passive parts for the VRMs and for the M.2. The M.2 is designed a bit differently but nothing spectacular in terms of uh, uh, what we haven't seen so far. The bottom part doesn't have a, a thermal pad, it actually uh, has a direct contact with the M.2 heatsink but the top uh, heatsink actually does have a thermal pad. So that's something different. Then we have Wi-Fi 6E uh, 802.11 uh, AXE which is 6 gigahertz, then we have uh, 2.5 gigabit per second LAN and when we're talking about USB, we're, we're going to get to that part as well. Of course, it's backed up with Polychrome Sync, which as you know, for my past experience, so how it works and what it does, but definitely there is a solution for any misbehaving of their LEDs with uh, signal RGB, so you can go with that. We're also having one Hyper M.2 socket at the back, which is uh, PCI Gen 4 times 4 with 64 gigabit per second compared to the uh, Gen 5 times 4, which is 128 gigabit per second. Uh, supports uh, RAID 0, RAID 1 for SATA and supports RAID 0, 1 and 10 for M.2 NVMe. And uh, then we go with connectors. We have one uh, thermistor cable header, two addressable RGB LED headers, one CPU fan connector, one chassis fan connector, one IO pump fan connector, one 24 pin ATX power connector and one 8 pin 12 volts power connector, one front panel uh, audio, uh, one USB 2.0 header, one USB 3.2 generation 1 header and one front panel type C uh, USB 3.2 generation 1. For the rear panel I.O. we have two antenna ports, one HDMI port, one optical SPDIF out port, two USB 3.2 generation 2 type A ports 10 gigabit per second, one USB 3.2 generation 2 type C port 10 gigabit per second, DP out mode supports DP 1.4A, then we have one USB 3.2 generation 1, four USB 2.0 ports, one RJ45 LAN port, one BIOS flashback button, one gold uh, line-out audio jack and one uh, gold microphone uh, input jack. 
It actually resembles to that uh, B860 that I did for um, that I reviewed with uh, Core Ultra uh, 9285K when we're talking about visual aspect, but it's much smaller, so we have the uh, heatsink uh, for the VRMs also much much smaller. But then again, we don't have that much VRMs, so you don't have to worry about overheating. Now, in general, when we go with benchmarks, AIDA64 Extreme Edition System Stability Test, the CPU goes up to 74 degrees and the clock speed goes up to 4940 MHz. In these benchmarks, unfortunately, I don't have uh, another motherboard tested with 9950X3D, so I'm going to go with many comparisons with uh, Core Ultra 285K, but you'll get the picture. But let's go further. So I'm talking here about MD Ryzen 9 9950X3D. We're having Kingston Fury Beast RGB DDR5 2 times 32 gigs at 6000 megahertz and Kingston Fury Renegade PCIe Gen 4 uh, 4 terabytes. We have Alkir 8360 cooling it down, and we have here the ASRock uh, Tai Chi RX 9070XT. Let's continue. Cache and memory benchmark read speed 78,739 megabytes per second, write speed is 83,245 megabytes per second, and copy is 72,280 megabytes per second with latency 80.7 nanoseconds. I think that's quite alright. But the most impressive thing is AES. 732,448 megabytes per second, double the amount of Intel Core Ultra 9 285K, just outstanding. Then when we go with Cinebench R23, average of 10 runs is uh, with thermals 74.89 uh, degrees. When we're talking about average on clock speed, we're talking about 49. 39, 35, something like that megahertz. And finally, the Cinebench score average of 10 runs is just above 41,000, which is still okay. As I said, the 9950X3D can go up to 44,000, but you just have to go and play a bit with the BIOS settings. Then we go with Corona 10, the best score out of every, every benchmark that I did so far, 15 million rays per second. Corona 1.3, best score out of everybody. 33 seconds to finish the render with 14.7 million rays per second. Indigo benchmark, quite interesting and again the best benchmark I ever had. Bedroom 5. 562 million samples per second with supercar 12.809 million samples per second. Geekbench 6 single thread score 3388 while the multi is 22493. Now the multi is a bit lower comparing it to uh, Ultra 9 285K but it is what it is. Jetstream 2, 329,821, which is just a bit lower. I think it's less than a thousand compared to uh, Ultra 9 285K. Then we go with PC Mark 10 because we have loads of stuff here. As you can see, overall it beats the 9 85k by 2000 points and then when we go with essential uh, application startup video conferencing web browsing productivity spreadsheet they kind of change the position a bit it's not always that the md ryzen 9 uh, 9950x3d beats it but when we're taking the motherboard into consideration that i'm using we're not talking about here 20 plus uh, vrm phase design or anything similar to that we're talking about 10 plus 1 plus 1 so this is outstanding. Uh, when we go with 3 Mark CPU profile, max score is with all threads, uh, 17,000. 16 threads is 15,225. And then when you get lower, it kind of equals up a bit. And that's quite all right still. 3 Mark time spy, 26,368, which does perform quite well. And then we go uh, time spy extreme, 14,250 which should have been a bit better i do have to say which is lower than 9 to 85k but then we go with fire strike 52167 combined score is 22210 the fire strike in general score is much better than any fire strike extreme 33557 which is also outstanding and fire strike ultra 18200 i mean these scores show that in general, this processor, AMD Ryzen 9 uh, 9950X3D, performs great. I can't deny that. That's outstanding. But pairing that processor, which is a high-end in this generation from AMD, pairing it with such a board that is, as I stated, and as I usually, if it's not a X motherboard in terms of X, X870 or something similar to that, and if it's a B with a lower VRM count and everything altogether, 
it's it's outstanding how it performs and what i can say is that this motherboard can handle 9950 x3d you won't get any lower scores drastically in those terms and it will still outperform uh, intel core ultra 9 to 85k i mean let's be realistic that wasn't a shocker at all so i would say that this board if you're aiming to go with something that is in a um, smaller chassis sff build small form factor or whatever you want to call it and you want to pick a board for amd that will pair it up quite nicely well apart from the other boards that i didn't review when we're talking about itx this is quite solid one and we had steel legend we had oh actually i'm going to pair this uh, graphic card with x870e tai chi so that's going to be quite interesting pairing it up with this processor this board this graphic card actually and to see how that works so yeah thumbs up for the itx boards because in general asrock is maybe one of few brands that actually in each generation they have micro atx and itx board for all their process for well basically not all processors but you know what i'm trying to say right so yeah thumbs up for this board performs solid when we're taking into consideration the price category and the performance category but still can handle 9950x3d of course it might be a different story because i'm cooling it with 360 so if you go with a sff build you're gonna most likely going to sacrifice the size of the radiator or in general the cooler which will then impact the performance and the cooling capacity but yeah there it is what it is so this is a bit different compared to a actual sff build just because it's an open air test bench and that's it so yeah thumbs up the link for the asrock phantom gaming b850i lightning wi-fi is in the description and if you want to pair it up with 9950 x3d you can do that and just in case that's too much for you i'm just gonna link 9800 x3d as well because well that's an outstanding processor for gaming and if you're looking for something in a smaller form factor or smaller fo footprint on your desk you might just go with that that's it for today thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe hit the like button click the notification bell and i will see you soon in another one bye bye Thank <laughs> you.